We're on the march. The Empire's on. Control freaks want to run your life. It's what they like. People that are not sick in the head want to just control their own life and want to have a secure life and raise happy children and empower humanity. But history shows that the worst of us crave power and control and do horribly depraved things. And if you don't know about that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a new history uh, or a, a new listener, I suggest you go investigate history and take a crash course in it because it is scary. And the, 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 these corrupt groups do the same thing over and over again. Everything they're setting up is what the communist and the fascist did because there's really no difference. There's difference in window dressing. It's like grape uh, Kool-Aid with uh, cyanide in it versus cherry. And they try to confuse you politically by giving all these different names of the same thing. It's like saying, you know, you can buy this car, but we have it in five colors. It's, it's all about keeping you unconscious, unaware, in kind of a dreamlike state while they do a lot of horrible stuff. And openly talk about shutting off our resources with the carbon taxes in 21. But this healthcare thing, as Dr. Blaylock just said, is thousands of pages long, hooked into code and other laws, and is the same way it is in Europe. It just it lets them do whatever they want, and they're telling us what they're going to do. Uh, now, Dr. Blaylock, please continue. Uh, you were getting into uh, population reduction, which they all the top people you know, at nauseum write books about. What's so amazing is this conspiracy against humanity by the miscreant, mentally ill people that tend to get into power. Like cancer, it, it it just takes over. It doesn't mean it's even dominant. It just is. It just it's 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 like a virus. These diseased minds that tend to get into control. Uh, the, I don't even know what you call this, but but they are waging war on everything good, and they crave wrecking things. Please continue. Well, L.A. Hyde wrote a paper some years ago that the title told it all. It, the title of the paper was "Why the Worst Always Get on Top." And he said that productive, creative people are out producing, creating, taking care of their family, and, and doing their jobs. Uh, people who are not creative, who want to rule and dominate, they look for power positions. Uh, they really create nothing. Uh, they produce nothing. Uh, but they do produce a lot of misery. Uh, but they have these grandiose plans, these visions, these utopian ideas. And ever since Plato, we've had one dreamer after another who was going to plan society, streamline it, and show us the way uh, to nirvana. But the problem is all of them end up uh, in gulags, uh, mass death, and police states. Uh, when you look back in history, it just it, even within uh, the modern history, we see that uh, the Soviet Revolution in 1917 was just uh, defended in glowing terms by some of the biggest, most prestigious names in America. Uh, we had the vice president, uh, Henry Wallace, just praising the Soviet experiment. Uh, we had Pulitzer Prize-winning uh, writers for the New York Times. Uh, praising the Soviet experience. And just to briefly interrupt, I have to, to, just to back you up for folks that don't know, from the 20s right through until the late 40s, our media kept it secret that they were killing tens of millions of people, including little children, putting them in camps and starving them to death. And they still, the, the, the nouveau riche types go to bars called mouths and stuff and think it's cute. You know, it's like seeing somebody walking through with a big swastika is offensive. Well, so is a red star. I'm sorry, but you're making the point. The elite here, they were in love with it. Yeah, I mean, the very, very powerful, prestigious people, uh, university professors, uh, politicians, uh, very popular people, very intellectual people uh, were supporters of Stalin. Uh, and even people like Walter Durante, who won the, the Pulitzer Prize for the New York Times, Travel with Malcolm Mugridge uh, to the Ukraine during the height of the Ukrainian starvation, where the Soviets purposely starved 10 million people to death. And uh, Mugridge was just appalled. He couldn't believe seeing such things. Bodies stacked up like cordwood. 
And he turned to Walter Durant and he said, this is the horror. He said, I thought the Soviet experiment was good. And Durant's response was, well, you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. Uh, a Romanian uh, who had been a communist and witnessed the same thing, uh, when he was told this very same thing, you got to break some eggs to make an omelet, he said, I see the broken eggs, but where's the omelet? Uh, so we, we live in these utopian visions, and that's what we're seeing today. Uh, the people like Obama and the Rockefellers and the CFR trilateralists, they go before the public and they paint this beautiful picture where everybody's going to get health care. You're going to see your own physician. It's just a matter of of the government paying for it. We're going to redistribute income so it's more fair and there's justice. Uh, they paint this beautiful picture. What people don't realize, that's the exact same picture painted in Soviet Russia in 1917, 1920s, and 1930s. Uh, it's the very same picture. It's like Groundhog Day. Day. It's like Groundhog Day. It's the same picture painted by Mussolini and the defenders of Mussolini and fascist Italy. So this is not the first time we've seen these beautiful mosaics painted and, and constructed uh, for public consumption only to turn into the worst nightmare the world's ever known. I mean, Soviet communism and socialism has killed in the 20th century hundreds of millions of people. Uh, it has put uh, tens of millions in the gulags every year, the worst conditions you can imagine. Most Americans are not even aware of that. Most Americans have never heard of the Ukrainian forced starvation of 10 million people. They don't know what centralization uh, and, and central planning can do to the mass of man, but we're going to find out very quickly here because, the, as you say repeatedly, this is all being put in place. Uh, you know, Stalin used to use the, the term uh, slice uh, the salami. He said, you don't take power all at once. You cut a little piece off and you take that for yourself and another little piece and another little piece pretty soon. You own it all, and you have so much power, nobody can resist you. And what you learn from history is that as a government becomes more and more dictatorial and totalitarian, it begins to fear the people because it's promised the people this utopia, but the utopia never comes. And so they're so terrified of being overthrown by the people, they have to create a police state to depress them, and they have to hunt enemies of the state. And that's what we're saying now. We're having people, if you're a Tea Party member, you're an enemy of the state, you're a danger. Uh, if you have a sticker on your car about the Constitution or mention the Constitution, the police departments are told to keep an eye on you that you're a danger. Well, who thought in this country, you know, in my lifetime, that if you utter patriotic uh, utterances, that now you're a domestic terrorist, you're a danger that only if you talk about increasing the power of government, uh, hailing the government for having uh, rule over every aspect of your life, only if you're willing to give up your private property are you a good citizen. Well, these are the things we heard in Nazi Germany and Mussolini's uh, Italy uh, and in the wow. Soviet Union. Now we're hearing them here. And it's so alien to our system, and, and now it's so naked. As you said, the salami slicing or the frog in the pot – First, they said, oh, we're not in a pot. Well, we're in a pot, but it's okay, but it's not hot. Well, now it's warm, but hey, it's nice, like a hot tub. Now it's bubbling, and they're saying, never mind, and, and, and openly saying the founding fathers are bad in FEMA training manuals and video. I mean, if I was a cop in a meeting, and I've had the cops call, and they say it actually does wake them up, and they go in there and start bad-mouthing freedom and the founding fathers and private property. I mean, these are just outrageous criminals. They're the enemy. It's so obvious. I mean, how have we gone this far, Dr. Blaylock? Well, it's because we denied education to our public. Our, our public has no idea what goes on in socialist and communist and fascist and national socialist country. We, te we, we teach our children about Nazism. We talk about uh, the Holocaust. But we don't talk about the fact, well, there's many aspects of national socialism that if you remove the Holocaust from it, uh, our great intellectuals in this country uh, were, were uh, using this as examples of progressivism, that we should adopt these national socialist policies. They like the social insurance. They like the, uh, the medical care system in, in Nazi Germany. Uh, they like uh, the, the eugenics programs in, in Nazi Germany. 
you know, Nazi Germany had representatives come to Rockefeller to find out how to run the eugenics program. Uh, we don't tell our students that. We don't tell them that Rockefeller sent emissaries uh, to the, uh, Nazi Germany meet with Hitler to tell him uh, how to run his eugenics program. Well, they funded it, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Absolutely. So th there's so much that we don't tell our... Th you know, there's books written about communism, the Black Book of Communism, uh, Utopian Power. There's all these books that tell all of these things in detail about the experience of... of and when you've planning. read them and then gone to the original history and find out it's true, it, they're, they're following it, I'm getting chills right now, exactly as a total it, blueprint. It, it, as you read it, it's terrifying because it's the same wording. They don't even change the wording. It's the same argument. It's the same utopian picture that they paint. It's but the they know it's not a utopia. They know it's really about the kill grid. Here's an example. 68 Gun Control Act. Senator Dodd, the, 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 the one that's dead, the senior one. Senator Dodd was a lawyer at the Nuremberg Trials, and that was used as an example. So they took uh, the Weimar Republic law, added the Nazi one, only changed the name in a few things, and passed it whole hog as legislation. I mean, they, I just wanted to back up what you just said right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, but we're we're not teaching our students that we teach them this silly nonsense in school. So they they end up they know absolutely nothing about Nazism. You ask ninety nine percent of high school graduates what was the real name of the Nazi Party? They don't know. They don't know it was the National German Workers Socialist Party. Uh, and, and you ask about what is fascism? Well, there, there's not one person in and 100,000 could uh, define fascism. Because if you define it, you'd say, oh, well, that's what we have in the United States now. Uh, fascism is here. Everything we, we experience in modern society is fascism. And this health care bill is just saturated with fascism and national socialism. Uh, but our students think, well, if, if you're not rounding up a racial group or religious group, uh, it's not Nazism. Well, that wasn't the, the entire essence of National Socialism. Uh, a lot of the oppression and killing and shooting came because people were resisting other programs, gun control, uh, uh, property confiscation. Oh, they were arresting the Seventh-day Adventists. They were arresting uh, whole groups. A lot of times if a Nazi wanted your wife, you were taken away or wanted your business. I mean, it was hellish. Uh, but again, the media only covers one area, but then people don't trust the media, so they say, oh, Hitler must have been good. Now we see that. That's not sophisticated at all. The truth is, as you said, Stalin admired Hitler, and they were buddies at first, and Stalin admired how the Nazis did it because their thugs were so good, and they were able to rob and steal so well, and they imitated each other. None of this is taught, but I mean, I've read the writings of Hitler. I've read the, I mean, they had the programs of killing little kids and killing old people and, 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 you know, all of the socialism and the, and the checkpoints and the neighbors tattling on you and groveling to the government. And, and, and they had a TSA brown shirt group. I mean, it's the exact same thing. Well, one of the things that's very closely parallel to this Obama bill is that in Nazi Germany, in order to, to turn the young people, uh, towards the idea of killing off the old and the 